and an editor of the Air and Travel magazine, Owen Cory. Um, it's a big week, isn't it, for travel and tourism. Finally, July 19th came upon us and people who had that digital COVID cert were able to, to fly out, fly out abroad and get that holiday in the sun. Um, you think there's a little bit of confusion, though, around the digital COVID cert and how it can be used, how, it's, how, it, how people can use it in the airport and how it's been picked up on and examined. Immense confusion and immense stress. Um, it's very clear, if you have been through the full course of vaccination or you're under 12 years of age, your travel is without restriction. Everything else is related to what happens in between and this really important cohort, which nobody really factored in in advance of this week, the people who are have their uh, full vaccination but haven't got their cert yet. What we know on the ground, people are travelling with their vaccination card, it's signed, it has your batch number, they're using that to travel abroad um, in, for instance, Spain, when you do a locator form, most countries, every country is a locator form, that's an assumption at this stage, it generates a separate QR code. So the checking system is slightly different. And you complete that passenger locator online. form online before you go to the airport. Before you travel. Nearly every country requires it. Another thing to watch, by the way, are airlines. One of our airlines has decided that uh, it's safer to bring bags on board, that's Ryanair, and Aer Lingus are discouraging bringing bags on board. So there are those sort of little extra things to consider in. But and dare I ask, are Ryanair charging then to bring the bags on board because they think it's a safer thing to do, but they're charging you for the there, pleasure? There isn't um, a sort of a charge to make sort of money out of it. There is a charge to act as a disincentive on the Aer Lingus side. The people who are waiting for the digital COVID cert, they're the ones that are swamping the two lines. The two outlines have just f effectively broken down. The information on the website, the government website's contradictory. Even the European websites are slow to update. So that's a very, very good one. Reopen Europe website. But immense stress, immense confusion. And the numbers travelling while they're, you know, we saw the television reports, they're pitiful. I mean, we have got 17,000 through the airport today, Tuesday. It was 107,000 this day, 2019. The rest of Europe has about 65% of its aviation moving. We've less than 30%. Okay, uh, Pionon, when you look at this and the, and the controversy already over this COVID digital cert helpline and how people are ringing and on hold for hours or being cut off before they can get through to anyone, it's a bit of a disaster, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I suppose people were, were were taking that that risk. Um, we were seeing even back as far as May that the government's reluctance at an EU level was to enter into the digital COVID certificate at all. They were trying to push it out effectively till September, uh, October, effectively bypassing the whole summer. And the the official view that we were being given was well there was just reservations around case numbers when in fact what was going on and what we were hearing all along in the background was there was concerns about getting the computer system up and running you then had the 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 hack of the systems within government mm. uh, particularly in the health service as well which didn't help the situation so there was always being it was being predicted all along that there was going to be a problem on the Irish side we're already effectively two weeks behind everybody else and now it looked like we need an extra two weeks on top of that it'll possibly get even worse next week when people want their digital COVID certificate to get into uh, well, indoor thing, dining. This is the question why they've kind of under-resourced this helpline because it's bound to be needed by so many people. I mean, the government are making a big push that they want to see businesses reopen and restart and enjoy a bit of summer business before we get into autumn and winter. And yet it's it's not making it the easiest for people in all cases. No, and I, look, a helpline will, will get overloaded if... if people aren't quite clear of the reason why why they're ringing. If, if it was just retained for people who were only flying in the following 24 hours, you, you might you might be, be able to handle it. But when you're getting flooded with, with calls and people and who are travelling in the following week. And the so messaging on. again that it comes yeah, to that yeah, it's yeah. just not clear, that it should be actually fairly simple, that if in the case of travelling, if you're fully vaccinated or under 12, there should be no problem at all. You should just be able well, to go we to the were, airport and, and, and leave. We were told there was a, there was a million of the the sorts being being sent out last week. There was a, a large number, definitely, very definitely, went out, and that the helpline was only going to be needed for a small number of people. And that that clearly hasn't been the case. Uh, are the government worried about a big surge in cases potentially next month and a backlash they may receive on 
on having the digital COVID cert, on allowing people to travel, on reopening indoor dining, albeit for those who are fully vaccinated and their unvaccinated family members? Yeah, so they'll be getting a, a cabinet will be getting a memo tomorrow uh, to make the decision to go down the route of reopening indoor dining, and and expected that the president will sign that legislation that are tomorrow Wednesday or else, or else Thursday and that'll allow things to get, get going by, by Monday. And within that, there there will be details on, on the current uh, numbers. A lot of interest being shown from the government's perspective on what's happening in Scotland where uh, cases peaked quite quite dramatically on the back of the Delta variant but then tailed off and, and came back down and they're, they're trying to evaluate now is there some is there some pattern there is there a potential that that, that could be replicated here because what they really don't want to see coming out of this is that you have to impose restrictions again uh, within a couple of weeks so the the intention around indoor dining with all the restrictions attached is that that is a solution that you that can get you through the rest of the tourist season uh Oh, and in order for indoor dining and drinking to reopen, there's a recommendation this evening around CO2 monitoring in, in dining spaces come next week. Uh, is this one of the biggest challenges now for businesses to get all this going to ensure that their ventilation and their systems are ready and safe for customers? It's an extra headache on businesses that have been waiting, waiting and waiting and feel betrayed that the rest of Europe has opened indoor dining. We saw it in the report there. Um, some countries have gone through the reopening without any rise in numbers. And we seem to have this abundance of caution. And the businesses have been being invested in uh, their tables, their kitchens, their hand sanitizer, all of that. This is an extra... Well, ventilation has to... emerged as a key deterrent for, for the virus. It is an airborne virus. So having those ventilation standards in place are probably pretty important. But should more planning have been made ahead of this decision to, to, re, to reopen at this point it around seems to, It's an obstacle course for the business owners. And it's not like we're the only country in the world that's had COVID. We've, we have been watching the other 27 countries through Europe going through the phases on this, and we've stayed locked down. Mm -hmm. And it, we should be in a position to say, uh, this is what works. We have a fair, clear idea from what's happening abroad, but there seems to be a um, debate that we're, there's an exceptionalism about our, our Irish COVID experience, and we're not drawing on the experience. We, you know, if, if Fiona's right. Scotland has become almost a fixation. But, we, you know, when you look across Europe and what they've done with indoor dining, and so, I was in Spain in May for Pedro Sanchez's announcement about the reopening, indoor dining had returned there. So weeks and weeks and weeks ago, other countries have been doing this. Thanks to Fiona Sheehan and Owen Corrie.